I'm Joseph Z, and I want to talk to you about things angels desire to investigate. And I'm going to bring this to you right out of my book, my brand new book, Servants of Fire. It's a last days prophecy intercession manual that engages angels, but we go into a lot of very in-depth teaching in this book, and I want to just give you an excerpt of that right now. Things angels desire to investigate. This is right out of the book. Let me give you this scripture. To them it was revealed that, not to themselves, but to us, they were ministering the things which now have been reported to you. Through those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things which angels desire to look into. That's from 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 12. This language and this type of thought comes from the imagery we see with the cherubim that were overlooking the ark. You know the picture like Indiana Jones where the ark is there and the angel wings are nearly touching? That was a magnificent picture. Let me go into this. After all the magnificent things God planned in eternity past, Jesus was now crafting the universe as the voice of God, and the time came for the creation of man. The first man, Adam, was a direct creation of God the Father. However, Adam's children were not direct creations of God. The angels, hear this now, they witnessed this. This is also the reason Jesus became the last Adam. Because God was also his direct father. Now, this is interesting. This peaked the angel's interest. It very much piqued it. Now, I want you to take special notice of this. Now, there's an awe factor that angels possess, and we read about that in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 12. It mentions, again, the things angels desire to look into, and this reference is everything involving mankind's relationship with God. Simply put, angels are very intrigued by mankind and God's relationship. They're intrigued by it, but it goes much deeper than that. Angels have an interest in the affairs of mankind, especially how they relate to the gospel. The statement, things which angels desire to look into, are brought even into more light when we read how the Latin Vulgate references the same passage using the wording, into whom. Get that. Into whom. Meaning, either into the Holy Spirit and the things of the Spirit, which the Spirit testifies in the prophets and written by the apostles, or else into Christ, his person, offices, and grace. And remember how he relates to you and I. Again, the statement, things which angels desire to look into, is also an allusion to the cherubim on the mercy seat with the ark being a type of Christ. The cherubim looked at one another over the mercy seat with wingtips touching. Now, let me give you a scripture reference to that. It says, And the cherubim shall stretch out their wings above, covering the mercy seat with their wings, and they shall face one another. The faces of the cherubim shall be toward the mercy seat. Exodus 25, 20, we see that. We might say that was a shadow of things to come for angels was seen in the typology of these golden cherubim looking at the mercy seat. Why? Because the typology references Jesus. Jesus is the mercy seat. He's your and I's mercy seat. Angels would one day not only symbolically be on top of that ark with the glory of the Lord between them as so many people reference, but additionally, angels would one day ascend and descend on the actual mercy seat, Jesus, the Son of God. John chapter 1 verse 51 says, and he said to them, most assuredly, I say to you, hereafter you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Angels ascending and descending on the mercy seat, which is Jesus. That's powerful. These fiery servants saw him in the fullness, that's Jesus, of his completed assignment and experienced the fulfillment of the prophetic symbolism represented by those two cherubim positioned above the ark. That's strong. That is strong stuff. Now again, 1 Peter 1.12, things which angels desire to look into. It was not... Not only was this referencing the mercy seat and Jesus being the fulfillment of that reference, both the Syriac, Arabic, and Ethiopian versions read, as angels desiring to look into all of these points, the sufferings of Christ and the glories following, the great mystery of redemption and salvation by Christ. That intrigues angels. You got to remember, they saw a lot from the beginning 
all the way up to where they, we are now, and they know what's coming in the end. Angels are intrigued by God's great romance, his divine narrative, his divine arc and storyline with you, with you. Angels are intrigued because God doesn't have the same relationship with angels as he does with you. We realize the book of Hebrews says he does not give aid to angels, but he gives aid to the seed of Abraham. And angels are intrigued by this. This is powerful stuff. How much more will they want to serve or minister to the heirs of salvation? They're engaged with it. They are employed by it. They are taken with it. They want to serve God's kids. They look at it as a form of serving God or directly serving God, especially when you speak the word of God, which angels activate and are responded to. But they look into these things. They look into these things. Let me give you another scripture. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen by angels. How powerful is that? Seen by angels, preached among the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up in glory. And let me also make this point. Angels witnessed the rebel, just absolute the rebellion of their mutinous brothers. Their terrible, mutinous, treasonous brothers. They rebelled against God. There was war that broke out. They were cast out of heaven. Lucifer, Lulu, and his band of rebels were cast out of heaven like lightning to the earth. Satan fell like lightning. But then Jesus came as the last Adam. They watched this ark. They watched the beginning, the rebellion, the pain of God of losing his children, all these things. And then Jesus came as the last and final Adam to bring back the sons and daughters. And the angels saw this. But not only that, there's one more piece to this puzzle. Colossians chapter 2, verses 14 through 15. I'll just pick up right in the middle. And he had taken it out of the way, talking about the law and requirements that was written against us, having nailed it to the cross, having disarmed. This is Jesus now. Remind you, mind you, the angels witnessed this. They witnessed the whole thing. Having disarmed, having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. Think about this with me. The angels of God saw Jesus live out his life, contend, defeat sin in the flesh, die on the cross a sinless life, descend into the depths, go to paradise, Abraham's bosom, preach to the prisoners, and there he resurrected, came back, and in that process led captivity captive, disarming the powers and principalities, made a public spectacle of them. Who did he make a spectacle of these wicked characters to? I present to you all those that were trapped in paradise, Abraham's bosom, and the angels of heaven. He made a spectacle. He said, boys, today's a good day. Today, I'm taking back the keys of death, hell, and the grave. And I believe the angels began to shout, and we get a glimpse of this in Psalm 24. As the angels are with the Lord God Almighty, ascending to heaven from his victory, and the angels in heaven begin to shout back and forth one to another. As they're going up, they said, Open up, you ancient doors. Be lifted up, you everlasting gates, that the King of glory may come in. And the angels in heaven shouted back to them, Who is this King of glory? The angels with Jesus in a procession from the depths up into the heavens began to shout to the angels in heaven again, The Lord, strong and mighty. And they began to volley back and forth because it was a time of celebration. The angels had intrigue from the beginning up to that moment. And they have intrigue with you and your relationship with God today because there's another round coming. They're looking for the finality of all things. They're looking for the great and final judgment, the redemption of our bodies, where we meet the Lord in the air and we rule and reign with him forever and ever. The angels will be with us in the battle of Armageddon. The angels will be with us in the millennial reign of Jesus. The angels will be companions for ruling and reigning with the kings and lords for all eternity under the auspices and authority of the great God, Jehovah. That is what intrigues angels about you, Jesus, and the whole narrative. I'm Joseph Z. I hope this helped you right from my book, Servants of Fire. I hope you get your copy today. God bless you.